welcome to the Crew Screen Podcast. I'm your host Paul Forrest and yes, I'm somewhere different this week. I am working, so this is, yeah, just around the back of a unit base recording. Um, so this week I'm chatting to Paula Fleming, uh, production coordinator, and this is the first half of our chat. The second half you can hear next week on all podcast services as well as YouTube. Enjoy! So hi Paula, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm alright, how are you? Yeah, very good, very good. Well, thank you for coming on and speaking to me about your uh, career so far. Yeah. <laughs> it's always <laughs> funny thinking about your job as a career though, doesn't it? Because you always think it's just a job. Yeah, yeah. I definitely don't think of this as a career. Like, I still think of it as a, like, I'm at uni just doing, like, work experience. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's weird to, because it's not a normal career, I suppose. No, like, no it's definitely not normal. Office, eight to five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, the, let's see, how we know each other, I think, the, was the first job we did Cleek together? Yeah, or we, yeah. We sort of came in a bit later on because we were doing second camera, but I think that was the first yeah. time I remember meeting you. It def- I remember actually the first time meeting you because obviously because I've worked with your wife yeah. quite a lot. Yeah. Um, and I remember the first time meeting you because obviously we've heard about each other, uh, and we were—I was just kind of like Paul, and you were like Paula, and I was like, "That was it." <laughs> that was it. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah, we know each other. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, no, because, yeah, Cleek was the first one. Yeah, so which was what that was four years, four years ago now, because that was the year we got oh married. Because we finished, we finished Cleek, then went to New York to get married, like right after it. <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> yeah, because then, because then I worked with Charlotte like straight after that, and yeah. like I remember she just came back in, and I was like, "My God, is that your married?" <laughs> <laughs> just like yeah. that, just over the Christmas break. Why not? <laughs> yeah, I oh, know that, that is such a cool way to get married. Oh yeah, yeah, that's what that's what we think anyway. Yeah, but, yeah each their own. <laughs> uh, so, uh, first question I like to ask folk, Paula, is uh, just to kind of get to know you a little bit, uh, so the audience can know you a little bit. Uh, what's your favorite film? Yeah, this is kind of worries me because I like it's so difficult. Like, I've got so many favorite films um, mm-hmm. that is just, it's actually so difficult to choose one. Mm-hmm. Um, but all my favorite films are like pure cheesy eighties ones. That's fine. That's so fine. like, I know like Rocky Four is definitely, <laughs> definitely one of my favorite films. <laughs> and I will argue to no end that it is the best Rocky film. Like, yeah, I have very in depth arguments about this that it is the best Rocky film. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Rocky Four is definitely up there. Um, Rocky Four is great. To, Rocky Four is great, uh, and it, people just don't appreciate it. Because uh, yeah. I watched it, was it last? I think last year, the year before, and there's a bit in it where cause you know how it's, it's famous for all the montages and everything. Else, yes, and it's like it's got a <laughs> montage, and then stops from maybe thirty seconds before the next montage kicks in, and you're like. We've just had one of these, but it, you just you're but like they're cool excellent. With it. Yeah, they're so good. I think yeah. Rocky, Rocky I, was the first one I saw as well. I that was it. Probably it's one that was most played in my house growing up, which yeah. is why I think it's probably like my favorite. Uh-huh. But um, I went to America at the start of the year, like mm-hmm. literally <laughs> before like all the kind of coronavirus stuff hit. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was in America and we went to Philadelphia and that's the only reason I went to Philadelphia was just to go to the Rocky Steps <laughs> and I was just like that's it I was like I'm, I'm kind of quite happy now, but yeah did you run um, run up and get someone to film you no so I actually I went with my friend Alan and he ran up but uh, um no I didn't run up because like I've got such a dodgy knee that I was just like I don't even want to embarrass myself <laughs> like trying to run up and I just came off like a week snowboarding holiday as well, so I was like really in quite a lot of pain. So I was like, no, but I walked up it. So I was yeah, like, you've um, you've been there, you've been there. That's the that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. So, so um, why Rocky? Do you think it's just purely because you watched it so much as a kid that, or when you were younger, that it's just yeah, a your favorite film? I don't really know what like because it's definitely like. Like, I'm one of four, and it's, like, none of my sister's favourite films. So I don't know if it is oh. just because it was on in the house, but, like, it's, um, I don't even know why it is. I just, I think I just love the character of Rocky. He's yeah. just such a great guy. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, so Rocky, Rocky 4 is definitely up there. <laughs> but I don't, like, I don't want to say that's my favourite film, because it is kind of, <laughs> it is kind of bad. <laughs> I have got loads of others. If it was, like, a serious favourite film, um, like... I've probably got like between actually between three maybe so it'd be Forrest Gump mm-hmm. in the name of the father and The Departed. They're oh, like right. my three serious wow. films. That's a um, that's quite eclectic. 
quite a yeah. quite a mix. <laughs> I know, yeah, I have got like yeah. I don't know anybody else who's got the same like taste in film as me. Uh-huh. Like during like lockdown when we're doing like all these like quizzes and stuff, like uh-huh. mine were always in movie quizzes. Uh-huh. And I think my mates just got so sick of me because it would always be like the most random questions about the ran- like these random 80s films. Mm-hmm. And, like It was just like, oh God, like another of Paula's weird favourite films that she likes. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, like what's the name of the robot? And is it Rocky Rocky 3, the one with the robot? No, Rocky 4 is the one with the Rocky robot. Rocky 4 it is Rocky 4. Yeah. <laughs> such, a, such a strange thing. I know. Such a strange yeah, thing. Yeah, it's really weird. Yeah. So, what's your current uh, role in uh, film and TV, Paula? Um, so, I'm a production coordinator. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it's kind of, kind of, it's always like in the middle of the production team. So, yeah. you've got like production runner, like production assistants, secretaries, assistant coordinator, and then the coordinator, which I am, and then the steps above that is production manager and line producer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, so the coordinator is kind of. I feel like the coordinator, we kind of, like, I would coordinate the rest of the production team Mm -hmm. because your line producer and production manager have obviously got so much going on Mm -hmm. and they're always out and about, like, between set and uh, base and stuff. So, like, when we're in the office, like, yeah, I'm kind of the one that coordinates what everyone else in the team does. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, our our job changes literally on a daily basis. Like, Mm -hmm. no day is ever the same. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's always kind of difficult to explain to somebody what what you do. What you do on a daily basis. Um, Yeah. Yeah, because it changes all the time. There's never really like a kind of a set day of what we we go through. Yeah. Um, which is what I kind of enjoy about it because it, it kind of keeps it different. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Mm. And so, what was what brought you to film and TV then? What was did you go through uni or was that? Yeah. Um. So I I did a media course at uni. Um. Mm-hmm. I always forget the name of it. It was either communication and media or media and communication. It was one of the <laughs> way ways about. But, um, yeah, so I went to Cali to do that. Um, and my, like, when I first went to uni, like, I always had the intention of going into PR. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, for, like, the first, like, kind of, like, two and a half, three years, that was always, like, my kind of route. And I did, like, loads of work experience because um, my sister I also works in PR. Um, mm-hmm. So I managed to get into, like, loads of, like, PR agencies and stuff and go in and do work experience. Um, but then... I think it was like towards the end of my third year, um, the X Factor came to do mm-hmm. their editions here, mm-hmm. and um, they contacted the uni to see if people would be interested in going and like helping out. And I went along and did it, and just absolutely loved it. Mm-hmm. Even though it was like a, it was like about a fifteen, sixteen hour day that we did, but I just absolutely loved it, and I was just like, this is incredible! Mm-hmm. Like just so fast paced, like so much going on, like just really, really interesting. Just had such a fun time doing it, and yeah, from there I just kind of switched and I was like no this is what I want to do mm-hmm. um and yeah then just started getting experience like kind of doing film stuff mm-hmm. yeah so that's was how that, it was that the runner doing the x-factor thing it was just yeah out. yeah so I was just like a, a forerunner in the x-factor and then I mm-hmm. did um Britain's Got Talent as well mm-hmm. um Britain's Got Talent was fun because I actually ended up going down to London mm-hmm. to do the additions down there and I did the additions in Manchester and Blackpool as well mm-hmm. So kind of got to go about with them and did like the live shows as well, which was really fun. Yeah. Um. And yeah, it's just it's it's incredible just kind of seeing like everything that kind of goes on backstage and like the things that you just you wouldn't normally see. It was it was really interesting. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so I did all that when I was at uni, and then was just really lucky that I actually managed to get like my first job before I'd even graduated. So mm. yeah. I was very, very lucky. Very lucky. So what so how was that your final year then when you got the X Factor? So sort of? uh, yeah, no, so I think it was towards the end of third year I did the X Factor mm-hmm. and then fourth year I did Britain's Got Talent. Mm-hmm. Um and that kinda was like over like a good couple of months. That so, like I think I was quite lucky that the additions were kinda over the weekends. So I was able to like go to uni during the week and then like travel down for additions and mm-hmm. stuff. Um so yeah, so it was it was it was good to get that experience when I was still at uni and like kind of know like that's definitely what I want to do. Mm-hmm. So so then mm-hmm. what was what was your path into working in Scotland? Because obviously the X Factors, I imagine all the production team and everything are up from down south, and then they maybe yeah yeah they were some local people. So what was your sort of path to getting your first job, and why production, not 
say the the running side of it that you would have been doing on X Factor? Yeah, so I um I was still at uni and so my friend Katie, who is my real life friend, but she works in costume. Um, so Katie and I <laughs> that's what she always likes to tell to people. The real life uh, friends. Yeah, like because like we went to nursery, primary school and secondary school oh, okay. together. Um mm-hmm. so we've known each other for absolute years mm-hmm. and um like still friends to this day. And she always says that to people whenever like I get mentioned, she's like, You do know she's my real life friend. She's not like a work friend. So we're real real <laughs> oh, life yeah. friends. Um so yeah, so she um she worked in costume. Uh, well she works in costume, sorry. So she was going on to a short film with Claire Kerr. Mm-hmm. Um and it was Claire's short that she was like producing and um Katie was helping out on it and she was like, Yeah, she's like they need somebody to help out, like just like as a production runner, do you fancy doing it? And it was only like I think it was about three or four days. It was through in Edinburgh and I was just like, Yeah, it's like definitely and went through and met Claire who is just absolutely amazing. Like yeah. such a wonderful woman. Um and she yeah, just kinda showed me the ropes and then just from those like three, four days that I did with her, she then recommended me to Angela Murray, who was mm-hmm. working on God Help the Girl. Mm-hmm. Um and was looking for a production trainee. So yeah, Claire recommended me to Angela and I went and met Angela and Angela took me on that and that was just that was it, just snowballed from there. Yeah. Well when, yeah. when was when was that? That would have been because I think Oh my god. I think I two thousand and twelve. It's like a camera trainee and it was like unpaid and things like that. But paid work mm. sort of came in the way because I was sort of getting my foot in the door. So yeah, that mm. was, I think yeah, it must have been twenty twelve. Yeah, yeah, because that was the year I, I graduated, twenty twelve, mm. um, and I did that like before I had even graduated. Because I remember on God Help the Girl, I had to take a day off to go to my graduation ceremony, <laughs> and I remember at the time I was just kind of like, oh, I was like, I don't need to go to my graduation ceremony. I was like, it's totally fine. I'll just miss it. Yeah. And like, and well, I think it was Katie Engels as a coordinator was just like, absolutely no way. <laughs> like, you have to go to your graduation ceremony. <laughs> I was like, it's fine. I'll just skip it. I, like, I don't care. Yeah, it's like I'm already um, working. Yeah. I don't need. I don't need degrees exactly. anymore. Degrees are useless now. Like, I, why did, I just wasted all my time. I should have been uh, trying to get. I know. But at the end of the day, you did exactly. spend all that time, so you might as well uh, walk away with the, with the degree. You've still got it. Uh, you can yeah. claim it one day. I don't even know where my degree certificate <laughs> is. That's the thing. <laughs> it's somewhere in my dad's house. I've no idea where the hell it is. Um, Think about yeah. it. I don't know where mine is either. It's in, <laughs> probably in this room somewhere. Um, yeah. yeah. But, um, so that's so you're. Let's see. So you've been about eight years ish in the industry. So yeah. How many years did you spend as sort of production runner um, before you sort of make made the step up? Um. So I was actually I was really lucky. I was only a production runner for maybe about like six or eight months. Mm-hmm. Um. And it was because I so after I did. God help the girl. I went on to Waterloo Road, mm-hmm. um, and I think it was series eight they were doing. So we we're just kind of like finishing that series up. I kind of came in maybe about halfway through, and um, yeah, like I was a production runner there. Um, and then when we went on to do season nine, they kind of just went straight into it, like mm-hmm. like straight into like all the kind of pre pep stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of our production team was actually um leaving to go into the script team, so. Stephen Little was a the coordinator then, who is also an absolutely lovely guy. Um, he, I think he obviously kind of maybe like seen something in me and was just like, no, like I want to offer that. Like, pro- like I didn't step up to production secretary, I stepped up to production assistant. And Stephen was just, I think he was kind of the driving force behind it. Like he was just like, no, he's like, I want to offer this to Paul. He's like, I, I really want her to be the production assistant. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and that's how I just I got like the step up. Um, yeah, because he was really in my corner and really fought for it, mm-hmm. which was lovely. Um, and yeah, then just stepped up after, I think it was about six or eight months. I can't really, I started there, I think, in the August. And then by the January, yeah, I was the production assistant, mm-hmm. which was incredible. Just like doing all the travel and accommodation and stuff. Yeah. A lot, yeah. lot, lot more pressure, but I suppose you also, yeah, because you then also, because when you're sort of production runner, you're, kind of on set and you're out in the car and you're running little errands and things yeah but you don't really get that once you've kind of stepped up you're pretty much in the office most of the time yeah you? yeah no totally like it is a completely different ball game like really because like you said you're out in the car a lot when you're a production runner like just mm. like 
doing everything and anything. Like I actually remember I'd only passed my driving test in the March and then started working on Waterloo Road in the August. Mm-hmm. I remember um, they had to, like a bed uh, of all things had to be collected from Glasgow and brought out to Greenock. And um, I just got handed a set of van keys. It was like, okay, you just go and collect this this bed. And I'd only like passed my test like in the March and I was just like, okay. And like just jumped in this van and just like drove it to Glasgow and got the beds and brought it back. And it wasn't until I came back and the team were just like, oh God, like we should have checked. Like, can you drive a van? And I was like, well, I can't now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's fine. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's kind of all the stuff that happens. Yeah, you just kind of get thrown at the deep end. Yeah. But yeah, then when you step up, it is very much like, yeah, you're hardly out of the office. Like you're just always kind of there like dealing with things that are going on and mm-hmm. phone calls and emails and stuff that you're getting in so yeah you don't get to go out to say as much yeah so you, you, you just sort of mentioned before there was maybe what se- six seven eight kind of people in production usually but sometimes there's less than that as well so how does that yeah. kind of because i've worked on jobs where it's, there's maybe only four including the line producer and it, you get to yeah. those, how does the workload sort of spread yeah, it, it kind of it does differ from job to job. Like, it, it's getting better now, I think, because um, a lot more big jobs are coming up here. Mm-hmm. So, like, um, like when I did River City, for example, it was I was a coordinator and then there was a runner. So it was just kind of effectively the two of us. Like, it was, was a production manager and, like, line producer as well. But just for, like, the core team, it was just me and a runner. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, when I did The Nest, God, we had two runners, a production secretary, assistant coordinator and a coordinator. So that's five of us. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, so it does, I think depending on how big the job is, obviously, like you have more of a team. So the smaller ones, like it's it's still the same amount of work that you need to do, Mm -hmm. um, which is difficult, but then you've got less of a team. But it's good, I suppose, for the production runner because they then get to do a lot more. Mm -hmm. Especially um, when it's the one a bit more experience as well, and they're maybe looking for that. Yeah. Up, so they're looking for something they want to be challenged at work, and they obviously do want yeah. to be stepping up. Yeah, like because there is like some production teams you will work on, and the runners are literally just like drivers, effectively mm-hmm. like driving between the office and set, and they're not really getting to learn an awful lot, mm-hmm. which I always think is a bit rubbish. And I think it just it kind of comes from when I was at Waterloo Road and like Stephen Little was really really good at like like when I was a production runner he was getting me to do like progress reports and travel and accommodation and stuff which is stuff that you really really need to learn how to do so I always try and teach the runners how to do that stuff like Mm -hmm. if we've got time like getting them to do progress reports and helping out with travel and accommodation because it's stuff that they're going to have to do if they do want to step up in production Mm -hmm. and then at least they've got a kind of base knowledge that when they do come to like actually properly doing it all the time, they're like, oh well, I remember when I did this before, and yeah. they're not starting like kind of like fresh like straight away. Yeah, I think I think um, from talking to Charlotte the first time she'd worked with you, um, mm. she was saying that that was she felt kind of there are some production teams you go into and everyone's very almost like quite regimented, uh, whereas yeah. she found that working with you, you were very much like, well, let's spread this across because you're going to have to yeah. learn this anyway. And yeah. it's it's a sort of good way to, way to learn because that was my sort of next question was um, that how what's your sort of process now being a uh, production coordinator training uh, those that you're working with? Um, yeah, so like progress reports is a, a big thing. Like I always try and make sure everybody knows how to do that because it is something that's it's a really important document. Um, so yeah, actually, I should probably explain what progress reports yeah, are because quite a lot of people don't know what they are. Um, so progress reports is basically um, like it's a like a sheet of paper that is every day we have to do, and it has things on it like the call time, like your first turnover, when they broke for lunch, when we wrapped, um, the scenes we were scheduled to shoot, and then the scenes that we actually shot. Um, if we dropped any scenes or cut any scenes, like that will go on this report. Um, cast call times like when they were uh, broke for lunch when they first stepped on set when they left the building mm-hmm. like all things like that like a- any additional equipment we had out any like um additional crew that we had out um 
the script timings, like so much goes into this report. Like, so you have, to, there's like, you get like an AD report from the ADs, you get the camera reports from the camera team, mm-hmm. um, you get the script supervisor notes. So all of this thing gets just collated into this one sheet. Mm-hmm. And it's effectively like an insurance document. Um, and I have had to like use it for insurance purposes on jobs. Like if, I don't know, a piece of equipment's broken or mm-hmm. if like a cast member's become ill and you've had to like shut down for a wee bit, like you use all these things as, and it's like for an insurance claim to be like this is what we've did and this is all the month like number of people we had out and stuff mm-hmm. um so it is a really really important piece of the like paperwork and a lot of the times like it is like the coordinator always does them um so that's why like the kind of junior members of the team maybe didn't like learn how to do them but I always try and like show everybody how you do them as well and like so they realize like just how important all this stuff is like like making sure you get all like this information to put in there. Um, I think I annoyed Charlotte actually quite a lot when I taught her how to do them because, like, yeah, like if like one bit of font was like maybe like a different from another bit of font, I'd be like, "Oh, can you change that?" And she's like, "Does it matter?" And I'm like, well, "I was like, I like it to look pretty." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and she'd always, she'd be like, yeah. She, but that's just me. But yeah. She, she said you've got a red pen that you like to use to sort of correct things. <laughs> <laughs> that was um, that was because Stephen Little used to do that to me. Mm. Like it became a game between me and Stephen that he would always get his red pen out and he would like want to make sure like to like mark something with red pen. Uh-huh. And like I was so competitive, I would be like, I am not letting him get this red pen out <laughs> because I would know it would annoy him not being able to tell me that I did something like made a mistake. But it was all just kind of fun. So they, uh, then I did it with Charlotte, where she was always just like, God, you're so weird. <laughs> She's like, does it matter that this line's a bit thicker than this line? But yeah. So is that all, all the like, sp- spell mistakes and grammar things and little... Did she said that yeah. I, there was too many spaces as well? If you had oh, yeah. left, <laughs> yeah. you left two spaces yeah, or only all... one space by mistake. Yeah. It all has to like match up. But that's just me being weird, like liking things like that. Yeah, but the, yeah. the, thing, is, the thing is, it's that's... It almost shows how good you are at your job because that's a document that a lot of people are going to see for the first time. People like people yeah, daily yeah. or cast members, or whatever, are all going to look at that, and yeah. it's almost distracting, or it can make you feel maybe a little bit amateur if if it's not correct. So yeah, it, it does make sense to spend that time and get it done properly. So do yeah. you find do you think that those you work with find you quite tough to work with, or do you think you're quite firm, or are you? Do you think you're I don't know people? actually. I don't know because, like, I always find people at work say that I'm really patient and mm-hmm. I, I'm really like I don't like have a bad temper or anything. Mm-hmm. But if you asked any of my friends and family, they'd be like, "She's the most impatient person in the world. She's so bad tempered. She'll fly off the handle at anything." <laughs> and like, any time people at work say like, "Oh God, you're so patient," I'm like, "I really need to record this and like." <laughs> send it to my family as like because they, they don't believe me at all <laughs> but I don't know I think I don't think I'm that tough like I think that I don't know I always kind of say is like we're not saving lives mm-hmm. like I, I wouldn't I would never want like um a production runner to like be afraid to come and tell me mm-hmm. like that they'd made a mistake um because it, that's, it's a horrible feeling if you've made a mistake and you know that you've made a mistake and having to then go and tell like someone else in your team by the way I've did this mm-hmm. it, it's a horrible horrible feeling and I would never ever want any of them to ever think oh god like we can't approach Paula because she's going to like bite my head off mm-hmm. and um yeah so I, I don't think I don't think I am that tough but other people might think I'm, I'm a poor bastard but yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't know yeah um I suppose we gravitate we like there'll be people who probably want to work with you if you're someone who can listen and uh, still be yeah. maybe firm from time to time and get that get that red pen out and correct everything but <laughs> but, but you, ha- yeah. you have those moments but when someone needs you for a personal issue or anything else that you're there to hear them or if, again if they make a mistake uh, yeah yeah I know sometimes I do worry because I think that like because I always say it's like oh we're not saving lives like we're making tv and films and stuff um and I do worry that sometimes that like my bosses are like, oh god, she doesn't care. Mm-hmm. But like, I just I, I don't ever want to like take it that seriously that it has like an effect like on my personal life and like I bring things home with me. Mm-hmm. 
Like, I, I don't want to carry that stress around with me that you have in work. And I wouldn't want anyone in my team as well to carry that stress. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's a horrible feeling. You kind of want to just go home and, like, chill out and not have to worry about things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes that does happen, but, like, yeah, I try to not let it happen all that often. Yeah, because I suppose the days are long enough. The last thing you need is actually taking it home. Yeah, and definitely. And you've got one yeah. day off or, <laughs> or what Yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> um, so do you have any favourite jobs, Paul? Is there anything that you would look back and go, yeah, that was that was one of my favourites? Um, River City is always a favourite of mine. Right. I, I absolutely love River City. Mm-hmm. I really, really hold it up there as one of my favourite jobs because it's, it's just so lovely. Mm-hmm. Like, the team there are so lovely. Like, all the crew are so lovely. The cast are lovely. Like, I, I've never worked on a job where the cast are effectively like the crew. Like, mm-hmm. they are, like, there's no airs and graces about them. They are yeah. so lovely, so down to earth, mm-hmm. so hardworking. It's just such a nice place to be. Um, and also, it's nice, like, I feel as though you can really kind of get a, a nice work life balance out there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's 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 nice as well for I think for the people with families and stuff. Like, yeah. it's a, a nice job for them to do as well because, it, you like it's really really like tough in the same like kind of way like because at River City you've always there's always two teams running at once, mm-hmm. so you've always got a team filming in the studio, a team filming in the back lot, but then when you're in production you've also got a team in prep. And yeah. then you've got a team in post as well. So you're kind of dealing with like four directors at the same time. But it's nice. It's like a tool. It's a well, really well-oiled machine now. Yeah. Like they've just, they've got it down to an absolute T. And I really, I did really enjoy my time there. And that's where I met Charlotte as well. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the first job we did together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, River City is definitely up there. Um, and then Wild Rose as well. I really enjoyed mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, because that was like the kind of the first like, was it the first film I did? I think it was. So yeah, it was just kind of seeing the differences between like working in like TV and then going on and like working on a film. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's not many differences. There is like a kind of a few wee added things that you do in the film that you wouldn't do in TV. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, working with that team as well, like I really enjoyed doing that, and I learned I learned a lot in that job as well, which mm-hmm. was fun. So what so what sort um, of differences were there? What even if they're just subtle little differences? Um, so yeah, so working on a film, um, you have a, a person who's called a bond, right? Um, and the bond is like an insurance, basically for like so for all your investors, um, the bond like acts as like their spokesperson, effectively. Mm-hmm. So like, they get sent every single piece of paperwork um, to like make sure that basically the investor's money is being spent as it's meant to be and that it's not being like just plundered in any way that the <laughs> the yeah. production seems fit but um yeah so dealing with the bond was like quite a big difference like some of them can be quite scary mm-hmm. but the majority of them are, are quite nice and like kind of get the like like progress reports actually what I was talking about like mm-hmm. they get them every single day just to see where we're up to and like sometimes you can fall behind with them um and yeah, some bonds can be like, no, like we we need it now. Like you need to get it over to us, and it's a bit of a kind of rush to try and get it all finished. But other ones just obviously kind of understand like the way filming works, and it can be mm-hmm. maybe like a day or two before you get it. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, so that's kind of that was the main difference for me, like dealing with the bond, to, like this infamous person that mm-hmm. rocks up from time to time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. That must be must be very, 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 very nerve wracking. Knowing that because the bond sort of they they basically cover if something's going wrong, it falls it falls mm-hmm. to them or it falls on their shoulders to sort of fix it. Is that kind of how it works? No, not really. No, like they're they're or maybe well, from my experience, it's always just they're like they're just there for the investors. Like they don't really right. have anything like you know, any say in anything that happens in the production they just kind of like are the eyes and ears for the, the investors just like if yeah like just to be like yeah they are they're spending your money like the way that they're meant to be doing it they're not like all just going out having a drink every night yeah. like spending yeah. all your, your cash yeah um 
there. Yeah, it's it's can be scary sometimes dealing with them um, if you've got a scary one, but the majority of the ones that I've dealt with have all been very nice. Good, good. Uh, so yeah. what, what sort of keeps you doing your job, Paula? What's uh, Why do you keep turning back up to work every day? God knows, <laughs> honestly. I ask myself this question all the time. Um, I don't really know, actually, why. Like, I just, I, I do love my job. Like, I'm... Mm-hmm. Um, like I'm, I'm very lucky in the fact that like um, like I, I can say that I do love what I do. Like obviously there is days where like you don't love it so much, and there's jobs as well, especially that you're just like Christ, like I cannot wait till this is over. Um, but I don't, I, I don't think I would do well in like an office job nine to five, like where you're sitting doing the same thing every single day, like. Our job does change all the time. Um, like you can have days that are like really, really busy and like you're totally flat out, and then there's other days that can just be like quite nice and like you can actually get to go down to set and like see a bit of filming and like actually like catch up with people and stuff. Um, I mean, those days don't happen all that often, but <laughs> um, they do happen, which it kind of makes it nice. But yeah, I just I think I, I definitely wouldn't change what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, like I, I do love doing it and I like as well the fact that like we do like kind of short contracts yeah mm-hmm. so like if you know like well like so last year like I did the nest and I was finishing in the December mm-hmm. and I was going on to Shetland in the February so I was like I've got like the whole month of January I was like so I literally just went away for the whole month mm-hmm. which was brilliant like yeah I had just like four weeks away and just had this really amazing time yeah. which was quite good considering coronavirus <laughs> exactly. and, I hit and I was like well at least I've had four weeks away I can't really complain yeah exactly I, I think I calculated it last year because I sort of just take a note of days because you kind of need to keep the paperwork for tax purposes and things anyway so I think I, I'd worked 141 days last year which I was sort of like that's actually like quite good like that you could make a living yeah. off not even having to work say half the year and I'd taken some time yeah. off when Dash was born uh, and just before that as well. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, you sort of go, what other job can you do where you don't have to work yeah. all the time? Or as you say, you finish a job and you know, right, yep, I know I've got four weeks off, five weeks off. I can take that yeah. time and uh, go on holiday or just like catch up with catch up with everybody. Um, so yeah. so you were saying you don't really have a typical day, but what, you, and you've talked about progress reports, but is there... Any other sort of responsibilities or things that you have to do uh, pretty much every day? Um, yeah, so well, the production team as a whole, like we we kind of just like arrange for everything to be there for everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. So, like, we will travel and accommodation. That's like a kind of obviously like a really big one, um, which usually kind of falls to the assistant coordinator to do, or if you got a travel and accommodation coordinator they'll do it Mm -hmm. um so yeah so make sure that all the cast are where they need to be before we kind of hand them off to the ads and then they make sure they're where they need to be when they're on set hand them back Um, to the same position i gave you them (laughs) yeah right so yeah so like we'll get them like if they live in london we'll make sure they're they're up here um like the night before they need to be on set um it's a bit different now because we've obviously with all the the COVID stuff, like we've all got like COVID testing and stuff. So mm. um, we are quite lucky in the job that we're on just now that we've got a COVID team. So they kind of work quite close with us um, for like testing purposes as well. So you just kind of need to like figure out where a cast member is, like whereabouts in the country they are, mm-hmm. like get them a COVID test now, get them to the airport, get them on a flight up. Um, get them to the hotel whenever they land here. Um, yeah, same with crew as well. Like you get a lot of last minute requests. Like if like there's additional equipment coming up, or like we need additional crew members, like mm-hmm. um, that aren't available in Scotland. So yeah, flying them up. Um, what else do we do? But see, this is when people ask me, like, what do you do on a normal day? And I'm just like, it literally just it changes minute to minute. Yeah, <laughs> it's so natural. You don't even need to think about it. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, so travel and accommodation just kind of cross the board for everybody. Um, clearances is a big thing the production team do. So um, we work quite closely with the art department in this. Like sometimes costume as well because 
they might have like a branded like costume that needs to be cleared. Um, so yeah, so any sort of brands that you see on the screen have to be cleared. So like the art department will come up to us with like a load of books and be like, we want to use these. So we have to like contact all the publishing companies and be like, can we use your book? And you have to like explain the reasons why you want to use it and just kind of like plead your case for them just to sign a form and be like, yeah, that's fine, you can use it. Um, yeah, it's the more that I've did clearances, like I kind of know now like what's going to clear and what's not going to clear. Right, okay. Um, yeah, because we did, uh, I did a job called, it was In Plain Sight, so mm -hmm. it was the one about Peter Manuel. Mm -hmm. And um, the director came up to me, I was doing clearances on that job because I was the assistant coordinator. Mm -hmm. And um, the director came up to me and he was like, Paul, he's like, I really want in this specific scene, it was like after Peter Manuel had killed someone, he um, was went into their kitchen and started eating soup from the the can. And the, the stage direction was that it was tomato soup and then when it obviously spilled on the floor, it was meant to look like blood and stuff. Right. And he's like, I really want the tin of soup to be Campbell's. Right. And I was just like, as like, there's no way as like Campbell's, this family brand yeah. are going to agree to clear <laughs> using that tin of soup in that mm -hmm. specific way. As, and I said it to him and I was like, I'll try for you. I was like, but I was like, I really do not think they're going to say yes. And they didn't obviously say yes because it's, yeah. Not a particularly family friendly scene that they was doing. Um, so yeah, so clearances is a big thing, and it can be really stressful at times as well. Like, especially if like directors like say to the art department like kind of last minute, like, oh no, actually I want X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, it can be a, a bit of a rush like to try and get things cleared. Um, I mean, I would say ninety percent of the time, like we do kind of we do manage to get it done, but sometimes it's just like if we don't have enough time and mm -hmm. the companies don't come back to us, then we, we can't get it done. Is there an element yeah. of kind of trying to sweet talk them a little bit? Do you sort of get on the phone and go, oh, but it's, it's, because obviously some of these jobs, they have no idea what these are most of the time or what they're going to be. And obviously you work on films and sometimes they don't yeah. see the light of day or they might not see the light of day for ages and then it gets panned or maybe it's really successful. So is there an element of kind of like sweet talking them and saying, "Oh, such and such a cast members in it"? And... Oh, definitely, yeah. Like on on the nest, like we obviously Martin Compton was the the lead in that, mm -hmm. um, and like written into the script was the fact that like um, like he was wearing like a Celtic strip, mm -hmm. so I had to like contact Celtic and be like, eh, "So we kind of we've got this Martin Compton drama. Like, is there any way that we would get clearance?" And obviously, because he's massive massive Celtic fan does yeah. so much for the club and they were just like yeah use anything you want <laughs> here you go just like they were like anything that has a Celtic crest on it yeah you can use it yeah well, that's um, yeah so yeah like you definitely drop in Martin's name and that definitely helped because it was yeah. like the easiest clearance I've ever done in my life <laughs> yeah so, um, so do they do they send you guys things or do they send the production things that are outside of what's actually going to be used or is it more of a here's do you, so for example do like say a, say a Celtic shirt is that all we've already bought for by production or is that sort of provided by Celtic for example? by them um it, it depends actually like um in that case like we'd already bought all the stuff that we needed mm -hmm. um but yeah sometimes whenever you you contact people for clearance you're like like oh can we use your book and they're like yeah yeah that's fine do you want me to send you a copy mm -hmm. um but the majority of the time we've already bought the stuff. Yeah. Um, the the art department themselves they they deal with like product placement. Mm -hmm. Um, that doesn't really ever come through us. They they kind of sort that themselves. Um, so like the product placement stuff, obviously that that does get sent. But there's like big companies and stuff that deal with all that. That literally, actually, first season of Clique was the first time I seen it. Like literally pallets and pallets of like all manner of things just arrived. <laughs> like it was product placement. And it was. Yeah, it was really, really strange. Just all these pallets of like, it'd be like magazines that like with like cans of coke stacked on top of it. It was just, <laughs> yeah, loads and loads of stuff. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, the art department kind of deal with all the, the product placement stuff. It never really comes through us. Mm -hmm. Just more like kind of featured props uh, we'll, we'll do with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, you mentioned uh, Claire Kerr and Stephen Little, but is there anyone else you mm -hmm. sort of look up to that you work with? Oh, see, this is a dangerous one because if I don't mention something, they're like, "Why didn't you say me?" <laughs> um, 
Yeah, like there, there is a lot of people within the Scottish industry that I think, yeah, it, like are amazing to work with. Um, Claire Campbell that I worked with in Wild Rose, like, is yeah, she's like absolutely incredible. She's like a force to be reckoned with, and like, um, yeah, it's definitely something somebody that I would aspire to be. Like, she is just such a lovely way with like dealing with the crew. Um, and just like making jobs fun, like she really did make Wild Rose fun for us. Mm-hmm. Like, because it, it was it was a tough job. Like all jobs are tough, but like yeah, it was definitely one I look back on and think like that was really really fun. And like I also learned a lot from her as well. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of the stuff I learned on that job, like I still do. Like now, like especially like in the kind of like prep stages of like when you first go into an office, like every, getting everything set up. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, like. I learned a lot from her in that job. It was absolutely amazing. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anyone else. But it, there's loads and loads of people that... Um, all the, really all the line producers you work with, you love all of them. All the line producers, <laughs> yeah. Um, who, I, well, I'm working just now with Bobby. Mm-hmm. He's, like, really, really great to work for. Like, mm-hmm. again, just makes it so fun. Mm-hmm. Like, it's He's the first time I've ever worked with as well. Yeah, yeah, really, really nice. And, like... Um, like the thing I was saying earlier about like if there's like a problem or like if you've made a mistake, like mm-hmm. I wouldn't feel scared about going to tell Bobby this has happened. Um, yeah, because he's a really really nice guy. Like makes it really fun like to work with as well. Um, yeah, I like working with him. Yeah. yeah. So my next question, Paula, is it's basically talking about the intensity of work in production so I kind of know some of this stuff because of obviously Charlotte's worked with you and uh, yeah. worked worked for a number of years uh, in the industry as well but I just want to touch on a few things and just kind of to get your feeling more about them uh, and it's things that I think as like on set crew we kind of take for granted but you guys don't really get the benefit of and one of them was uh, you don't really you guys don't really get a lunch break because usually what happens is no. on you, you either sit at, sit at your desk and have lunch or if you're next to the crew, all the crew come in and bother you because they've all got problems. So what's so? Yeah. Do, you, do you think you should, I mean, you should have a lunch break. You should have some sort of, just like, even just give me half an hour, just give me a bit of room. Yeah, like, I, I definitely, like, I'm the worst for it. I actually, like, just sitting at my desk and eating my lunch, like, on the go. Um but yeah, like the the one thing is like because like everyone always eats lunch at lunchtime, like mm-hmm. so when the crew have broken and people like it is their only time to kind of come in and like speak to you because they're on the floor. So like I don't hold any grudges whenever people yeah. come in and ask me things. I kind of expect it now. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like we definitely we don't like sometimes you can kind of steal like fifteen twenty minutes for yourself, like mm-hmm. to like eat your your lunch but that's kind of that's kind of it pretty much um I don't really know how we would get around that like it, I think it's just the way that the way that, that it is but I definitely like try and encourage people like to even step outside go and get some fresh air like I do like when I'm on jobs like I sometimes will actually try and go and get my own lunch because a lot of the times like runners will go and pick up your lunch for you um but definitely, like, on the nest, actually, like, I would always, well, not always, like, sometimes they would, if it was a busy day, the guys would go and get me something, but I'd always try and take at least that, like, 15 minutes just to even just go to the shops myself, like, yeah. pick up my own stuff, because it's, like, the only kind of chance you get. Mm-hmm. Even then, you've still got your phone on you, and people are still phoning yeah. you and emailing you. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah, was, was, uh, that was going to lead me to my next point, which is that um, I know you've definitely experienced this, because Charlotte has, is the calls that you get from cast as well as crew outside of your own yeah. to for example oh I'm in a cast members in an apartment and their tv doesn't turn on so somehow it's your problem does that yeah. I, I know there's there's kind of no way around it because they don't really have anyone else to phone but how do you how do you deal with that when knowing that you could be sat going out for a meal with someone and a cast member phones you at any point in time yeah, that is the kind of thing, actually. Yeah, we are kind of on call, like, 24-7. Like, you, you do get, like, crazy phone calls. Like, I'm try- like I've am like i actually had a couple on this job from crew. Like, 
I, I keep like laughing about it in the office like and I'll always bring it up because like driving out to unit base and somebody will phone you and just be like Paula I don't know where I am and it's like if you don't know where you are how am I meant to know where you are like seriously it is it's just that thing of like I don't know where I am I'll phone production they'll help me it is yeah. like but if you don't know physically where you are in this world how am I meant to find you <laughs> um <laughs> think, well, things like that oh god I know but to say, I think it's just because because we send out the call sheet like mm-hmm. everybody's always got our number like like because it's at the bottom of our emails like it's kind of, it's just easy for everybody just to kind of phone us mm-hmm. um yeah like I when I was at Outlander actually like I was um getting like calls maybe like well because I was going out with one of the guys there and I was getting calls at like maybe like 10 11 at night and he was just kind of like he's like you're not working he's like why are you answering this and I was like if I don't I was like it's just going to make it so much worse yeah. like if mm-hmm. I don't just answer it and deal with it now it's going to be so much worse tomorrow like because it'll be like why didn't you just deal with that last night yeah um so yeah so it's it is a kind of tough one but it, just, it kind of just makes your life easier mm-hmm. just to kind of sort it Mm-hmm. And especially if it's a cast member who's like the one that I always find funny with cast actually is when like you'll do like a travel itinerary for them and it's like you'll be picked up at this time by this taxi company, here is our number, here's your booking reference. Mm-hmm. And then if the taxi doesn't turn up, they phone you and they're like, Taxi's not here. <laughs> it's like you literally have every every bit of information that you need on that travel itinerary. Like just phone phone the company and be like, Hiya. Uh-huh. Like my taxi's not there, but no, yeah. they're always always on us. Yeah. Um even crew as well, actually. <laughs> um but yeah, it's I I don't really know why it happens. Mm-hmm. Um I suppose it's just cause we kinda I suppose like sort everything for everybody, like kinda get people into apartments, right. get people into hotels and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um we are the kind of the face of it, like we're the ones that have organized it, so yeah. We kind of need to be the ones that like sort the problems. Mm-hmm. I was going to say um, productions kind of like if it's if uh, crews are a family unit, productions like the mums. It's like it's the mother, <laughs> it's the mother. Yeah. The, so you've got any problem, you always you've skint your knee. It's like oh, you're going to go to your mum. You can't. You don't know where you are. You're going to go and phone the people who have all the information, basically. Yeah. It's funny as well because it's like I feel as though we're just kind of like that person in the sky because like <laughs> a lot of the times like crew don't even know what we look like. Yeah, that's like, true. And, like mm-hmm. a lot of the times like you won't meet people until like mm-hmm. the end of the job, mm-hmm. um, which I think is really really sad. Like, and then it also sometimes it can make people be a bit, bit mean to you because they can't put like a face to your name. Yeah, so they're just. Yeah. A bit, horrible whereas if they actually like kind of seen you and like seen all the work you were doing and stuff mm-hmm. like they maybe wouldn't be as mean yeah. <laughs> but that's true that's yeah true. there's definitely um times i've done jobs that i've maybe even at the rap party like you kind of see people like you kind of know the people that you work with every day and you kind of see other mm-hmm. people and you go okay well okay i know paula and da 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 and you're like okay so that's who else have whoever else have yeah been, that's the assistant coordinator or that's the tra- the travel person or whatever and yeah it it's it is a bit strange that you don't have that connection with people because we have it with posts sometimes as well if you're getting notes back from them you just get this horrible yeah. note and uh, it's like either something was mislabeled or what have you and you you just what the first thing you do is you just get angry at them because you don't yeah. know that you don't know that person that's just that it's just a name and yeah. a name. But yeah, I wonder if that's something. Oh, maybe we should all have like a pre-shoot party. Like you should have a rap party at one end. <laughs> yeah. You have a pre-shoot party yeah. before you start the job. But then maybe that might be uh, quite dangerous as well. <laughs> yeah. Somebody suggested. Yeah. Somebody suggested to me once they were like, "Oh, like because we've got like a cast photo page, so it's like all the cast members like on a photo." Um. And somebody said to me like, oh, "We should have that on the unit list. Like everybody's photo should be beside their name." Like, so you could actually, like, yeah, because sometimes, like, you say, like, I'm going to go and speak to, like, Paul, and then the runner will be like, oh, who's Paul? And you have yeah. to, like, try and explain, like, what that person looks like. Yeah. That's not a bad idea, actually. Yeah, I would never do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah. But, yeah, no, I think that's, like, production definitely, like, like, I, I like working from the AD truck, um, like, because you are kind of, like, you're down 
like a base so you can like go up to set like you see people at lunchtime and stuff like you can then like work really closely with the second DD like because production the production coordinator and the second DD like and the production manager as well like they all work quite mm-hmm. closely together um but like if the second DD is down in the truck and you're up in the office it's mm-hmm. sometimes there can be a bit of a kind of disconnect mm-hmm. so I do I like being down there and I like kind of like seeing people and stuff but like some jobs like the like line producer production manager might not let you really go down to the truck they kind of want you in the office and yeah. don't really want you to leave um but yeah no I much prefer being down in the thick of it yeah so you kind of miss yeah. that element of being when you were starting out being a production runner sort of yeah yeah jump in the car and go to set or jump in the car and go to lunch on the way or what have you yeah you're almost monitored now a bit more you need to be your yeah best. No, totally. I think that's why I like River City so much, actually, because like everybody was in the one building, and you could like just jump up to the art department or costume or makeup or the like, even post within the same building as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. so it just kind of felt more like kind of a, a nice atmosphere, like everybody kind of knew each other. Whereas, yeah, a lot of times, like a lot of times, actually, you might end up meeting somebody on a night out and you like you recognise their name and you're like, why do I know you? And you're like, oh, because I've sent you a call sheet in about five different jobs, but I've never actually <laughs> met you. Um, yeah, so, I, yeah, I do. I kind of wish that production were down on on set more. Um, but yeah, it's kind of the way it is at the moment. Hopefully it changes. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. So do you come, as a female working in production, do you feel you come up against any issues that, uh, any sort of discrimination issues or do you feel like uh, you're not given respect that you should be uh, as a female work in production? No, dude, it was so funny. We were talking about this in the office yesterday and I was like, I don't really think that I, I get that. Mm-hmm. And I, I, one of the girls was just kind of like, yeah, she's like, you just kind of have like this kind of air of like, as soon as you meet me, it's like, don't mess with me. And I was like, I was like, am I that scary? I was like, I don't think I'm that bad. And she's like, yeah, she's like, no, she's like, I just think it's just kind of like you've got a bit of a, a, bit of a front, which I suppose I kind of do um, if you don't know me. But yeah, I, yeah, I don't, I don't think I particularly have any mm-hmm. issues. I can't think of any. Mm-hmm. But yeah, well, like, I definitely. That's what we want really is that there's no yeah. issues. Yeah. Like, I think as a whole, like the production department is predominantly female. Okay. Um, like maybe like not so much like when you kind of get to like the the higher roles, like producer and line producer and stuff. It seems to be there's kind of like more kind of guys in that area. But yeah, the the production department like definitely like predominantly is kind of like girls that are in it. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe sometimes it can be. Yeah, like I, I have worked in a few jobs and maybe like sometimes inappropriate comments are made. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. but it doesn't happen all that often. It's maybe happens like a handful of times. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I'm quite quick to to bite back <laughs> if somebody yeah. says I've something that I didn't agree with. That you wouldn't take any. <laughs> <that many. Yeah. laughs> You'd probably give as good as you get. I know. I think sometimes my mouth works quicker than my brain, and like I'll, <laughs> I'll react a certain way, and I'm like, oh, I don't, maybe I shouldn't like overreact, like, but. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. It, it is. It's generally a nice atmosphere to work in. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I've never really kind of came across like just because it's like kind of female oriented, like dominated, like it's been that bad. But yeah. No. So it is. It's alright. That's good. That's good. So that was part one of my chat with Paula. Part two you can hear next week on all podcast services as well as YouTube. If you want to support the show, you can by going to buymeacoffee.com forward slash cruise screening. Uh, it's shows on all social media platforms at cruise screening. And yeah, see you next time. Goodbye.